Allied headquarters, General Eisenhower orders a farewell review in honor of his comrade in arms, Admiral Sir Andrew Brown Cunningham. Veteran of many a Mediterranean sea battle, Admiral Cunningham succeeds Sir Dudley Pound as Britain's first Lord of the Admiralty. transport bringing the American Secretary of State Cordell Hull stops at Cairo en route to the now historic conference at Moscow. Making his first airplane flight at the age of 72, Mr. Hull plays an important role in the far-reaching agreement between the world's four great allied powers. Soviet warplanes patrolling northern waters sight an enemy submarine and attack with a new and deadly weapon, the parachute bomb. Soviet surface ships race to the scene and blast the area with a pattern of depth charges. Next day, air raid alarm and Russian sailors man battle stations to beat off a squadron of Nazi planes. Giant torpedoes for Russian planes indicate that Soviet forces are taking the offensive against the enemy at sea, as well as by land. A German freighter sighted, and the torpedo finds its mark. At a quaint village on Quebec's Gaspé Peninsula, the fishing fleet makes ready for sea. Boats are cleaned and nets repaired for the last big run of the season. Rows of sharp hooks are baited with herring, and the fleet moves into open waters. Three thousand fishermen live on Gaspé, and their annual haul during the July to November season is 35 million pounds of vitamin-rich codfish. Nearly 2,000 boats are employed in this important war-producing job, each boat bringing in from 800 to 1,000 pounds a day. The youngsters bring home the one that didn't get away. Codfish and cod liver oil for the armed forces of the United Nations. The Allied Fifth Army grows in strength as day after day powerful reinforcements rumble through the streets of Naples in pursuit of the Nazis. Fresh vegetables miraculously appear when Neapolitans learn that American soldiers buy instead of steal their food. Funeral processions are hourly occurrences. Few are the families whose homes have not been touched. The Fifth Army rolls on. With Naples in allied hands, General Mark Clark, the American commander, prepares to leave the city. He inspects an airborne honor guard, then, climbing into a scout car, leaves for the front. Force pictures reveal scenes of devastation in and around the Italian city of Benevento. The main bridge crossing the Calori River, scientifically demolished by the retreating Nazis. Benevento was once a strong point in the German line between Naples and the vital airfields of Foggia. Now its power plant is smashed and aircraft factories are in ruins. Made an important military center by the Germans, Benevento became a battleground where the Allies were unable to bypass the city. The 
railroad yards which helped make Benevento a strategic prize shattered by shells and bombs. upon the retreating Nazis come men of the 5th Army. Through Benevento's blasted streets, Italian civilians return to what is left of their war-torn homes. Nazi wounded are borne to the rear, surprised to receive from allied hands the same care and medical attention that is given every United Nations soldier. and streams swollen by continual rains slow down but fail to halt the 5th Army as it pushes on north of Caserta. Mounted troops of an American division move out for reconnaissance in the hills. Cavalry still an effective striking force where motor vehicles cannot operate. Now near the crucial bend of the Volturno River, infantry crosses the fields of an Italian farm. From a command post overlooking the Volturno Valley, the battlefield stretches before the camera's eye. In the background, exploding phosphorus shells as Allied artillery pounds Nazi positions across the river. Volturno is bridged. United States engineers throw roadways across the stream and the 5th Army pushes ever northward. <laughs> 